so I thought I would share this. Um, I put a poll up on uh, my Instagram a couple of days ago now um, with two options of videos to, sh to sh um, film for you guys. One of them was when my teacher told me no um, and what that entailed and all of it, the backstory and what happened at the end and how it all got resolved. Um, and then the, um, the other one was the logistics of driving across Canada with a chronic illness because there is a lot that goes into that. Um, you guys wanted to see um, the first one, which was what my um, experience was when a teacher said no to me. Um, so let me set kind of what we're in. I am in a grade 11 outdoor ed class. Um, I have done the program called KELP, which is an environmental leadership program, um, where you do go on a canoe trip, and I'm going on a canoe trip with my outdoor ed class in grade 11. Um, so I was looking forward to it to the entire time. I did all of the stuff. The first thing I really noticed was when my teacher sent home these, we had like yellow sheets that she sent home with tracking stuff, and we had to get her to sign off on all of our stuff. Like, she had checked her clothes, she had done this, like, yada, yada, yada. Like, it was, like, a whole list um, of stuff. And she had sent home, and they were all kind of all through to us, and she sent mine home. And I'm in the back of my car, and I'm driving home from school, and I'm reading it. And at the bottom it says, to create a special workout plan to get my body fit for this trip. I am not skinny by any means, and I am not overweight by any means um i live with a chronic illness um which some of the side effects of the meds i'm on is i don't feel full easily um so i can be hungry for a very long period of time so that was kind of something i kind of looked at and went okay so i showed my parents my parent my mom sent an email and it's just like this is only on hers like yeah 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 i and I was at the point at that time stronger than my brother who was going on this trip my twin brother is in this class um so I said like I was like okay whatever right so I was like okay we'll just keep going so I get keep working through class keep building my paddle yeah 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 I get home um from our swim test we had to do our school we had to do a school swim test um I'm a fully trained lifeguard at this point I am literally I was like I don't even know. I think I've been working for like four months at this point, five months at this point. Um, and it was great. Oh, excuse me. Um, so I was like, I can do this, right? Um, and so I was, okay, whatever. And I was not feeling well that day. I had to work later that day. I had to work that night. And um, the pool was really cold, which makes my blood sugar really hard to deal with. Um... So I did the swim test, I passed with flying colors, like, I don't even, like, he literally, he said to me, he's like, you don't even have to do this. And I said, I'm going to do it to show leadership, right? Like, I was like, I'll be a good sport, I'll do the swim test, I don't care that much. Um, it was nice because I could, me and my brother could demo stuff, um, that, like, things that he needed us to show. So I did that. Um, and then... She wrote on, I sit out of the water for a couple of minutes just to let my body kind of regulate and so I'm not bouncing because that makes me feel quite sick actually. Um, so I got home from work and stuff and the yellow sheet came home the next day and it, there was a note that said it took longer for me to get back in the pool. Um, and my brother's like, I don't blame you, that pool was freezing. Um, so I was like, okay, I don't really care, like thinking nothing of this, but then realizing kind of a couple days later crap she's marking what she's not paying attention to what I can do she's paying attention to what I can't do and she's making notes about it so I was like okay whatever fast forward two weeks later um she's going through a list of kids names of like who's going on the trip and my name doesn't come up so I put my hand up nicely and I wait till everyone's done talking and and she calls on me and I say my name is not on that list and I'd like to know if it was just you missed it or if like for whatever reason why um and I said if it's a personal thing because it didn't really tell a lot of my classmates about my health um just a personal matter and I guarantee I know what you're talking about so she did I looked at my brother because he, he didn't know what I meant by that and I looked at him 
and I did, um, we have like a sign for test, which is this, or this, like either finger, um, and I did that to him, and he went, he literally was like, and my, my, like, the girls that, I had a couple of friends in that class, and they were sitting beside me on either side, and they're like, what are you and your brother doing, as I'm talking, right, and I was like, she's not letting me go because I'm diabetic, and they're like, huh, I'm like, yeah, say we're diabetes, not letting me go, guaranteed, that's what it is, and so it was like, okay, and so I left crying, my brother followed me, and called my mom, and told my mom what was going on, and my mom was mad, I think, um, she was frustrated, and she's furious, my parents have spent my entire life living with this illness, telling me I can do whatever I want, um, and supporting me in that, they supported me getting my ML, they supported me training the swim team, they supported me doing outdoor programs, they supported me when I wanted to try track and field, and I wanted to, they supported all of it, my, literally my dad became a coach in my league to coach me because I had diabetes for hockey, like, they did it all, which was fantastic, um, so I was like, all right, this is strange, I'm like, what's going on, so my mom picked me up, a couple of early from school and I told her everything in the car crying of course and I remember saying to her in the car I remember sitting there in the car thinking about it and going why can't I go I'm diabetic so what why can't I go that started lots of emails lots of going back and forth between the teacher my mom and dad the principal and some staff members by the end of the second week before the like we had a week and a half until we left for the thing i re remember thinking to my parents this is gonna, i'm like i'm not gonna go and i came home one day and i was crying my mom's like why are you crying and i was like because i'm not gonna be able to go on this trip she's not gonna let me go on this trip because i had not completed this workout this workout she wanted me to do um because it was stupid um and i was and it was like i had to do it at lunch so i couldn't do it on like during class time i had to do it at lunch um before school and after school and i'm a busy kid i also lived like i live out of town where i go to school um so i have a half an hour drive to school and i was like i can't force my siblings to get up an hour earlier to come to school to do a stupid workout that doesn't make any sense um and they were my mom was like yeah that makes total sense i hadn't done that I had not gotten a doctor's note. Um, she had requested a doctor's note for me, from my family doctor, um, of what to do when my blood sugar was at 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, like literally every number in the book. My blood sugar varies anywhere from 2 point whatever to like higher than 34. Um, and it just depends on what the heck is going on. So I arranged with the principal for glucagon training, so the teacher's going on the trip to help prepared. I arranged, um, I was open to talking to my teacher, I was open to doing all of that, and I was really scared that it wouldn't happen, and I wouldn't be able to go on the trip. And so we did the glucagon training, um, and it was really nice to see. My mom and dad were there for sure, uh, my twin brother was there. And he said in the meeting, in front of my, like, in the meeting, in, um, which had the teachers that were going on the trip, the principal, staff, um, some office staff, myself, my younger sister, both my parents, and my twin brother, they said in, like, he said in the meeting, he said, I will give up my experience to be Emily Shadow. So she can do things. So she can go on this trip. Um and it was really like my siblings I didn't ask my siblings to come they didn't have to come they just were there um and I think it showed the teacher that like yes I live with this disease but I have an army behind me I literally my best friend was mad that I didn't tell her that it was happening because she would have come <laughs> she was really mad at me um about that um so she my teacher was like okay that okay whatever so the teacher started talking to the nurse that was there doing the training. Um, I brought in old glucagons that, we, that, that they could use. Like, I have expired glucagons around, like, I think I three in my room. Um, so I had brought an extra one so that they could see and actually do it. Um, 
and then I let them touch and like I took all the needles off all my stuff so they could touch it all and they could be like safe with all of it um and get kind of comfortable and familiar with it um I tested in front of them like four different times I let them test me like I'm very open with that sort of stuff um I remember the the main teacher so my like actual outdoor teacher started asking the nurse questions and saying like I was at 2.2 on my entire kelp trip and yada 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 and I was like the, <laughs> the guy did the diabetes nurse has two diabetic kids or at least that's from, from my understanding from talking with her and she said to me and she said the thing she's like if she had two is it 2.2 the entire trip she would be dead she would not be here um which kind of i was like that is not something i wanted to hear but yes that's true um my parents were like we're gonna send her with all this my parents had written documents like whole things my parents signed like so many there were so many things um and at the end of the meeting we were leaving um i do the work i do work shift that was a fun day um i do work shift and i got to work and my mom my mom was driving me to work and she said to me she said you're going on this trip um my mom works as a communications director for two um fairly large companies now um well, they're both non-for-profit companies. Um, but she was like, you're going. And I was like, okay, whatever. So, fast forward. We are driving home from Storm the Trent, which we did the same year. The day, like, we, Storm the Trent was on the sun, yeah, the Sunday. And we left on the Monday morning to go on this canoe trip. We're driving home from Storm the Trent. Storm the Trent is a 6K hike a 26k paddle and a 26k bike ride we are and i did the entire thing but we slightly low for a good chunk of it and felt pretty gross but i did it like i did the entire trip no questions asked no problems i was like sweet i'm gonna be fine this will be perfect i'll be fine we get there we're driving in on monday morning and i say to mom what happens if i can't go on this trip and mom's like me and your dad will drive you and literally leave you there so that you have to go on the canoe trip. They're like, we'll follow them up, drop you there, and then you have to go on the canoe trip. And she's like, you're going. And she's like, if they refuse to do, I will call the media. My mom had written two news releases to send to the media if I was not denied on that trip. Um, and it was pretty funny, actually. Um, and they were whole the, the the headline my mom was hoping that they would use is a I think, I think it was 17 at the time 17 year old denied an outdoor ed trip because of chronic illness that she's fighting to bring more awareness to um i luckily was allowed to go um but that started a lot more than just that that showed me that not everyone thinks the same way my parents do um and the fact that yes i go from chronic illness but i can't do everything and it's been my life mission to prove people wrong that i can't um that like things they think i can't do i will do um all the time it's actually kind of scary sometimes but that was one of those things where i was like all right and that also it that became a thing where i started to not trust teachers um specifically female teachers because my outdoor teacher was female i started not to trust them because i was told by a female teacher you can't do this because of this um so that brought a lot to it um it was very scary it was a very scary thing thinking man what happens if i can't do this what happens if i actually do die on this i was really lucky i did this trip um, I did it really well. I did well. I did great. Um, I did amazing. I, like, I completed outdoor ed. Um, I was really grateful because out of that came a very, 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 very supportive teacher. Um, which is a whole other thing. Um, having ex extra support. But it was scary. It was scary going on a canoe trip with a teacher that literally has no idea what to do if something happens to you and that was terrifying that was terrifying to me that was terrifying to my parents um 
So we actually, my parents, we weren't supposed to bring cell phones. My parents sent me and my brother with one of our phones um, so that we could text back to my parents and be like, here's what's going on, here's any updates. So that if something was to happen, my parents could help um, and such. But I, by the time this trip went, I pretty much managed my diabetes on my own. I do ask for help sometimes when I'm overwhelmed and I'm stressed and I can't think and I need help, I do ask for it, but most of the time I do it on my own. And that was really, really hard um, to be able to kind of do that. But it was, and it was an amazing thing because I was like, I can do this. Um, and I remember after our trip, we were all sitting around eating food, um, like when we got off the lake for the last time, we were all just kind of sitting around eating some snacks and we were all there and it was a great group of people, like great group of people. And they were like, we were all kind of talking and one of the guys said, do you know what's really impressive? The teachers are all talking, but they can hear us. And someone said, what? And they're like, the fact that we just did that trip, A. And the second thing is that we just did that trip and I got to watch a kid do it with a disease that makes her life 10 times harder than ours, still do it. And I was kind of just sitting there, I was very tired. The trip was draining, I was exhausted. I went home and slept for two days. I took a day off school and slept. Um, I was exhausted, but I was pumped because I could do things. Um, and I continued to prove her wrong, um, a teacher wrong. I spent a lot of time um, in that class worried after that because I was like, this isn't, this is not going to end well. Um, so I basically, I spent the next six, um, I think there was like six weeks left, as much time as I could, I spent it out of that room just because I didn't feel safe. Um, if we were doing stuff outside, yes, I felt great. I felt safe. Um, but like, I didn't do much of it on my own. Um, and that was really amazing, but it did leave a lasting impact. I don't trust female teachers. There's certain female teachers that I don't trust. Like, I have some teachers that I knew before it that were female, and I trust them, like, completely. But other teachers, I'm like, mm, no. You're giving the same vibe. I'm not going to do that. Moral of the story is I did get to go on the strip. Um, it definitely was not an easy thing to do. Um, but I did, I was really proud that I did get to go on it. Um, and I was really happy that I got to see what would happen afterwards. Um, and what would happen to my new sort of life, um, while camping, um, in an outdoor ed class. And then I continued on and I did do Headwaters, which is another, uh, there's another outdoor ed, ed trip um, that you do in Headwaters, um, which is a winter camping trip, so I did that, um, but yeah, I have, there's been some stuff that I've done that's been very difficult to do with type 1 diabetes or living with a chronic illness, um, and if you guys really did like this video and you would like to see more, I have, there's other things, Headwaters had some challenges, um, for sure, Kelp had some challenges, for sure, um, I went to a summer camp, and I worked two summers at a summer camp um, that was far enough away that um, it would be really scary for people around me if I did pass out and go low and need to be hospitalized. Um, and how I kind of got around those and how I worked um, around those sorts of things, for sure. I did, I've done that. Um, how I do hockey, how I do swimming. If you're interested in those sorts of things, let me know and I will definitely make a video on how I do and how I live with those sorts of things and I've lived through them for sure. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, this kind of story time of what happened. The One of the next, I'm not sure if it's going to be the next video or the video after, will be the logistics of driving across Canada with a chronic illness. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you later.